April was the deadliest month in Iraq in nearly five years, with more than 700 people killed and another 1,600 injured, according to the United Nations. The country has also been gripped by political unrest, with calls for Prime Minister Maliki's government to resign. Let's discuss this issue further with political analyst and activist Sukhan Chantin joining us now. Hi, Sukhan. Um, the Iraq Parliament speaker has called for the Prime Minister to quit and for early elections. How might that affect matters in the country if it happens? Matters in the country are in a dire state, and unfortunately, this has been visiting upon this what should be one of the greatest uh, countries and peoples of the region for many decades now. This is all connected directly to what's happening in Syria. This is all part of imperialism, maneuvering the chess pieces to isolate and then to destroy Syria. We know that the intelligence services of Britain and the United States are training death squads in Jordan to go into Syria. They're doing that similarly in Iraq as well, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, which really deepened historically the sectarian division with Iraq, particularly through the mid um, to 2000s, the first decade of this century, really has, has said that Jabhat al-Nusra is part of its, uh, of its movement. So really, Maliki is not playing ball with the West in relation to Syria. He's not using his country or allowing his country to be used by the West for regime change in Syria. And this, and really this is the critical issue of why the Gulf Arab stations and the West are actually uh, giving a lot of life to the opposition movement to overthrow Maliki, then to produce a new Iraqi regime which is complicit, proactively complicit in the regime, regime uh, operation against Syria, then rolling onto Lebanon against Hezbollah and obviously the big prize which is the Islamic Republic of Iran. And what about uh, if it goes this, the way you, says it, you say it will, what's that going to mean for the Iraqi people then? Well, unfortunately, it's been bad news upon bad news for the Iraqi people. Really, for, for those in Iraq who are interested in foiling the plans of imperialism and Zionism and the allies in the Gulf against the Iraqi nation, the, the, the best of a worse situation is to ally with the Islamic Republic of Iran or in a framework of patriotic liberation movement. But frankly, that's not going to happen. You know, the moment where it really Iraq, the Iraqi people should have united was just after the first Gulf War. That didn't happen. Then it should have happened uh, when Iraq was invaded and that didn't happen, then it should have happened when the Iraqi resistance was creating blows against our Western hegemony while Hezbollah was doing similarly in Lebanon, which actually Saddam Hussein congratulated them, and it didn't happen then, and it's unfortunately not uh, likely to happen in the foreseeable future. But this is unity, foiling the divide and rule and divide and ruin plans of, of, of the West in relation to Iraq. This is what must happen if Iraq has any viable future for standing on its feet. Sukhan, do you take any cheer then from Iraq's uh, just held local elections? Yes, some candidates were killed, but standing back from it, wasn't the vote a sign that there's the will at least to get the political process back on track? Iraqi people are great people. They've made many achievements historically and in modern history. So, you know, there is always hope in the worst situations, but the trajectory of history currently is disastrous for the nation, unfortunately. But one hopes that they can actually build upon the sparks of unity that happened post-2003 in the resistance when, when, when Sunni and Shia Iraqis were de facto united against resistance against the occupation. And let's remember the SAS in Basra in 2005 wearing Arab headdresses with bomb-making equipment who got caught by the Iraqi police. We know whose hands are all behind this, and that is in London, Washington and in Paris, etc. As far as the UN is concerned, what can they do? The UN Secretary General is um, concerned over what he calls the political crisis in Iraq. What actually then is the UN likely to take to help resolve it? Has the United Nations ever really played a very uh, constructive or positive role in Iraq? It was the United Nations sanctions which has resulted in over a million deaths of Iraqi children throughout the 19s, which the former senior uh, US government member Madeleine Albright said it was a price worth paying. So this is really the role of the United Nations. And still, until this fundamental reform of the U uh, United Nations Security Council, it remains the colonial office of Western powers. A final thought from you, but I know you could probably write a book on this. <laughs> it's now been over 10 years since the US-led invasion of the country. What's the legacy of that military operation, briefly, in your opinion? I think, really, what happened was the Iraqi resistance on all factions across all confessional uh, sides of Iraqi people really bogged down the empire in Iraq so China could rise up, so South America could rise up. That, in a, in, to give it a positive spin, is the legacy of the invasion of Iraq, which is the resistance. Political analyst and activist Sukhad Chandan, thank you for your thoughts on the programme.